Hey guys, so I promised you a video talking about foam and talking about some of the kinds of foams that you can lay up fiberglass on top of. I'm not going to show any actual fiberglass today, just the foam because there's plenty of it and there's a lot to talk through. Pardon the mess on the bench behind me here, I'm literally packing up and getting ready to move as we speak, but I noticed that I had a couple of bags of this stuff floating around, so I figured before I packed it up and put it in a box, I'd show you through it. These are all scraps from when I was working on the plane, and I can't finish that. It's only a four-seater. I have five kids, so now I'm off on my next project, the schoolie, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to reuse some of my fiberglass skills there. There are a lot of different kinds of foam. Um, most of the foams are used as cores, and um, this is what we call moldless construction. The foam itself is the mold. And what you do is you take the foam, this is the substrate, you shape it to what you want the piece to look like, and then you put the fiberglass on top of it, and that makes your body panel. So if you want a bent body panel, you bend the foam, you lay the fiberglass up, and it keeps that shape forever. Uh, most of the time, you're not actually bending it, you're shaping it. And each of the different foams is shapeable in different ways. Um, most of them are pretty easy to work with. Uh, there is one type that I don't have here, and that's pour foam. Uh, some of you know what that is. That's the type made where you have two parts that you pour together. It's the same stuff you use to insulate a wall, and it is used for this kind of thing as well. Uh, the thing is that obviously I don't have any because it's liquid. I'd have to make it, and I don't have time to make up a batch. Um, I'm not even sure if I have any in the shop right now. So I figured I'd just walk through what some of these foams are, what they're used for, how they're worked with, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, first of all, I have a couple of pieces of fiberglass that I laid up without any foam core. Um, so these are just utility pieces that I made for different projects. Um, I did use a core for each one, but it just wasn't foam. This one here I laid up over a sheet of metallic conduit, EMT. Uh, I think I used a piece of half inch EMT. And I just laid the fiberglass up and over the edges here, laid it down on my table. I literally had it down on my workbench like this on a piece of plastic, lay up the fiberglass on top of it, a little oversize, and then when I was done, it's on plastic so it comes right off, you cut it to shape. And this kind of thing makes great electrical channels, uh, wiring runs, um, really anything along those lines. It is waterproof, um, especially if you seal it. You can attach it to something with more fiberglass and you would lay the fiberglass up and overlapping the edges. Or you can just use something like RTV to attach it down. And I use, uh, you know, either a, an exterior sealant product. Uh, I'm sure I've got one floating around here. Uh, I'm not sure if I can come up with it right now, but you've all seen the kinds. Uh, you can use silicone, uh, caulk, uh, anything along those lines will seal this up pretty nicely. Advantage of using something like RTV, RTV Red is pretty popular is um, it's adhesive, uh, it'll stick, it'll stay waterproof, but when you want to peel it, you can. So you can slide a knife edge under it and peel it off and get at whatever's behind it and, and need to service it. Fiberglass also is springy. You can see that I can flex this, it'll return to its original shape. So one of the things I've done is I've slit one of these lips off here so that it's just three quarter round and I would cut it right about there uh, and I would just run it straight down the bandsaw like this, and that would make a nice little channel for me to do uh, some wiring where I could just literally pull it back a little bit, stuff the wires under, and that'd be that. So I'm not really talking about those bits today. I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like if you don't have a core. You still pretty much have a core. It just doesn't happen to be foam, and it might be removed when you're doing your lid. So uh, talk about some of the basics here. Um, this is styrofoam. So is this. This is the stuff you're used to thinking about when you think about styrofoam. We're all familiar with this. This is the kind that's made out of the pellets. It's pretty friable. You can shred it with your fingers. It doesn't really have a lot of strength. They make coffee cups out of it. It's a good insulator. It's waterproof, uh, but it's really not very strong. Um, you can see that I can, I can flex it with my fingers here very easily. I can crush it. Uh, it provides very little strength. Um, insulation is pretty much its only value, and that's how it's sold. You can do layups on top of this. Um, I'm not sure why you would, other than it's cheap and you can get it at Home Depot. Um, but I wouldn't really use it for anything serious. I mean, when it breaks, it doesn't even make clean edges. Um, it really has very little strength. It's super lightweight, I suppose, if you're making a model airplane, but something like a schoolie, I don't think it's worth much. Um, 
This is another kind of foam that you can get at your home improvement store. This is much more rigid. You can see that like I can break it, but it'll break cleanly. It's a very closed cell form. Uh, so there are no gaps in there that water can seep into or get underneath. And it's very stiff. Like when I try to compress it, although I can, I'm strong enough to do it, it's a lot stiffer. And that's important because the purpose of the foam is to provide both the shape of what you're making with the part and also crush resistance. Fiberglass is very, very strong in tension, trying to pull it apart, or in compression, trying to squeeze it together. It's also relatively strong in shear if, or in torsion if you were trying to literally tear this apart. It'd be very hard to do. This is only two plies of bid here, but I really doubt that I can tear it by hand. So that's strong, but if I hit it with a hammer, it's not gonna take a blow. I'll get a hammer down here for you. I don't have my claw hammer that's up on the deck because I've been working on that. But I've got a little tile breaking hammer here. And you can see this is, again, just a piece of foam. I have fiberglass laid up over this. This was a sample that I made for somebody to show them how the process worked. So this is just regular foam, fiberglass on top. And I can put it on it. I'm going to be bouncing the camera around. Sorry, the tripod's on this table. And um, it's not dented. Now, I'm not hitting it awful hard. If I hit it hard enough, I would punch through it. But, I mean, think about that as basically what maybe an 18 to 20 gauge sheet of steel would do. This is just two plies a bit. Real simple, real thin, real cheap layup. If I want something stronger, I get into these other kinds of foams. And that's what we're talking about today. So this is real styrofoam, the good stuff. The stuff that you do layups with. Um, it's very stiff. I can't break it. Of course, it's a couple inches thick here, so I wouldn't be able to do that anyway. Um, it is friable. You can see see how I'm wearing gloves for a reason here. See how I have what looks like little glass shards all over my gloves? I don't know if the camera's picking that up here, but this uh, material breaks down over time, and this piece has been sitting outside in some sunlight, so it's a little degraded. It's just as strong as it was. It'll, you know, it'll provide a lot of crush resistance, so I would totally use this to do a layup, but you know, I might sand it a little bit first just to rough up the surface. I got dents and nasty stuff all around here. With these scrap pieces, I use them as wedges under wheels when I'm working on my brakes. These are great to make sure if the car drops off the, the uh, lift that it's not gonna damage your brake drum or your brake uh, disc. You know, so it, these have kind of taken a beating and that's why there are scraps here today. Um, styrofoam has a couple of cool properties. First of all, Almost all of these foams are very easy to cut. This is just a standard hacksaw blade. You'll notice I don't have it in a hacksaw frame. But if I wanted to, I can very easily shave off a thin piece of it here to work with. And if I want to make some little part that I want just a little bit of a tab or a mounting tab or a bracket or you know, I'm doing something complicated, anything along these lines, I got a piece of foam in about 10 seconds, all right? It's real nice and easy to work with. Um, I, I regularly work with aluminum and steel. I got buckets of it floating around in the shop, but I gotta tell you, this goes quick. It's really nice and easy to work with. Um, you can also sand. All of these foams shape very easily. This 24 grit uh, sandpaper, I'm not even using a sanding block. Uh, if you want a nice straight line, uh, a sanding block's a good idea. And, you know, I can make whatever shape I want out of this, you know, get a little bit of a profile on here. And this is what is meant by shaping the foam and then doing your layup. You make your piece out of foam and then you do your layup on top of it and it sort of petrifies it and preserves it forever. Now, styrofoam, although it is easily shaped, is still relatively rigid. Um, so it's very strong. It comes in different weights. This blue foam, which is used in aircraft construction, by the way, is also the same stuff that they use for docks. So it's really cheap and easy to find if you're a scrounger or a scrapper. You can get blocks of this stuff just floating around. Sometimes you'll see it junk on the side of a highway. It'll look pretty junky on the outside, but because it is, you know, pretty thick material here, I can slice the, the outside edge of that off and I'm good to go. You know, I can use the inner, inner material here, no trouble. One last thing about styrofoam, which is a really nice thing, is that it can be shaped with what's called a hot wire. I don't have one here in my shop today. It's in the, the place that I'm moving to. Um, but what that is, is basically just a piece of wire. Baling wire will do it, although there are better wires. 
Uh, and you use a power supply, um, a variable power supply that lowers the voltage down to something safe, usually 20 to 40 volts. And um, you literally make up a frame, you string the wire through it. These things are not rocket science. You can make it out of a couple of pieces of conduit, a 2x4, and a power supply. Um, but when you run that wire through here, it makes a perfectly clean edge. And the reason that that's important is that you can follow templates with it. So if you have a template of a curve that you want to follow, let's say you've cut it out of a PDF that you printed out from something online and you want to get exactly that radius, or if you took a shape off of something else, you made a reverse template, say, off of the corner of a bus and you need a nice, smooth, matching surface, you can totally hotwire this stuff. When you hotwire it, it looks like this. And you, as you can see, you can get very, very thin profiles out of it. This here was part of the leading edge of the wing of the airplane. This is the scrap material that was removed from the foam block, if you can imagine like this, after hot wiring this inner profile. And so when making the wing, we took templates. We had one on either end. You can even see the nail hole where the template was attached. And the templates are just made out of melamine or laminate or wood or whatever you want, anything smooth. And you run the hot wire over it, uh, just nice and smooth, and you get a perfectly smooth surface. Now, if you look, this surface is very rough, very textured. It's perfectly fine to do a layup, but I'm going to have to do some finishing work. I'm going to have to get in there with some micro, some bondo, to make a nice smooth finish if I'm going to do, uh, you know, paint. This, that's paint ready. Okay, so if I really wanted something nice and smooth here, this is a beautiful finish. That's what you need to do to make an airfoil, a wing for an airplane. School bus? Not so much. I don't think you really need to do a lot of hot wiring, but I'm just calling it out because it is convenient. If you happen to pull a couple of pieces of metal off and you want stuff that's exactly the same shape, you can tack it to the sides of the block, hot wire around it, and boom. It goes in about 10 seconds. So that's styrofoam. Now, this is PVC, um, polyvalent chloride. Um, it's actually technically the same foam that a lot of deck chairs are made out of, but this is made as an actual foam rather than a solid plastic. And also, it's not dyed white or bleached white. Um, these are the same foams. You can see they come in different thicknesses. Don't mind the discoloration. These are actually exactly the same foam. This one was left out in the sun. This stuff will discolor in the sun and needs to be protected from UV. You can paint it, you can put whatever over it, you can bury it under something, it doesn't matter what. But if it starts getting a lot of sunlight, it'll start to deteriorate. Some of these foams have had the same thing happen to them. You can see the different colors here. If you look, it's darker here than it is there, and that's because of discoloration from the sunlight. Um, it doesn't significantly weaken it, but it does a little. Now, PVC works a lot the same way as the styrofoam. It is denser. Uh, not because PVC itself is denser, but because this particular foam is. This, I think, is about 6 pounds. This is 45, if memory serves. I I'm going off memory here. Um, as you'll see, I can still cut it, but it takes a little bit more work to do. Um, and this was pretty thin stuff. If I was cutting through a 3-inch block of this, this would be, I think, a fair bit of work to cut through that material. I do still regularly cut it with these things. Uh, it's just that it takes a little longer. Um, also, all of these foams are very easily cut with any kind of razor blade. Um, the one thing you have to know is that although that does give you a nice clean edge, like that, see, look at the different colors. Although that gives you a nice clean edge, uh, razor blades have no kerf. The, um, it's actually a negative kerf because the kerf of the blade is wide, or the thickness of the blade is wider than the kerf of the cutting edge here because the cutting edge is just a bevel on both sides where a hacksaw actually has a, a kerf it has a set to the teeth that's what makes those waves there and so it'll actually cut a little bit out and make a channel for itself as it goes down reason i'm saying this you can cut through this no problem you can cut through probably that no problem you start cutting through this with a razor blade, the going gets real tough. The blade starts really sticking in there. It'll start wandering. If you've got a flexible blade, like one of those long four-inch segmented dealies, you know, it's going to start wandering out of the cut. It's a real trick to cut. Um, if you happen to have a, a bandsaw, any of these materials will cut very, very easily with a bandsaw. You'll never need to change your blade. I mean, this isn't like wood or anything along those lines. Oops, that won't fit. 
a, a bandsaw is going to make a nice smooth cutting edge there with, uh, with minimal loss. Um, this has good crush resistance. This has better. This is also stronger, so even though this is used for the wings, you don't need as much of this. This thickness of this material is actually one of the most common things that we use. So this is 3 8 material. Um, usually when it's sold, it comes in metrics. So I don't know if it's exactly 3 8 but that's how they sell it. It's almost 3 8 You can see it's just slightly off, but good enough for government work here. Um, this material is a little harder to sand. It will shape with 24 grit, grit sandpaper, but you can see I'm kind of going at it here and I'm making like maybe a half inch radius where I kind of went at that for about the same amount of time and got much more material removed. It's a little thinner, but still, it's much denser material. Uh, the pores in the foam are much smaller and um, it's much stiffer. You know, if I'm bending this, the, the foams, as they bend here, this has a lot of flex to it and this has less. Um, it's just a denser material. Great for instrument panels, uh, structural work, interior furniture, cabinets. Um, this, if you were going to make basement storage, uh, outside uh, things like shower or um, like outside sink wraparounds, any kind of thing along those lines, this is the material that I would use. This is my go-to stuff. It's relatively cheap. You can buy it in three by four sheets. Um, and just cut the bits and pieces that you want out of it, get a lot of life out of it. Costs a little more than plywood, but not too bad. Um, and it lasts, obviously, a long, long time. So um, most of the time when I'm doing layups, this is the stuff that I go to unless I have a specific reason to use something else. Um, another name for this is Divinicel, uh, although it's just PVC. Um, this is the same stuff, uh, sometimes called lastifoam, but it is actually, I believe, the same material. Um, but you can see this is much denser. Um, if you look, this material has pores in it. This has almost none, and it's poured to a much higher weight. This is uh, H45, this is H100, okay? They're colored differently, I think not just because they have to be, but because it helps you tell them apart. Um, but in any case, you can see if I try to break this, it breaks with a very, very small pore structure here. Um, it's much, much harder to cut. I can cut it with a hacksaw, but it takes me a lot longer to make the same amount of progress here. We're starting to get towards uh, almost a pine wood uh, density or consistency in terms of being able to work with it by hand. I can hand cut pine, couldn't quite do it with plywood or it would be annoying. Um, and this is kind of getting towards there. Maybe this would be a dense balsa. Um, it will break, um, but it is very, very rigid, much more rigid than this one. If I try to bend them at the same radius, it's a lot harder to bend it around the same uh, radius here. And really, this is not meant to be bent. This material, you can see I've got a little routed profile here. This was an off cut from an instrument panel where there was a hole here for like a glove box. And you can see this was scrap here because I accidentally broke it or who knows, maybe it was a practice piece. Um, most of the time when I'm working with something like this, I'll be using a power tool. Typically a Dremel, um, that's my favorite one. A Dremel with a rasp tool makes short work of any kind of foam. You can also use the sanding discs. Those are great for shaping of any kind. Um, and you know you can drill, uh, you can use a bandsaw, you can use a jigsaw to cut them, anything you want to cut the shape. But this material is very, very dense, and this takes a little more work to work with it. Um, and then you start getting into your urethanes. Uh, that's what these are, these uh, yellower ones, not the lastifoam yellow, but this other stuff. And you can see, again, I have different densities and thicknesses of this. This stuff is very thick and very rigid. Um, I could not bend this at all. There's no way I'm bending that material. Um, it's, it's, you know, just a, a very high density. It's still very light. Uh, I wish I had a scale, but, um, you know, it's, you know, bounce around light and, um, you know, it'll definitely float. Uh, I can't remember what the weight of it is. It's usually stamped on here. Uh, oh, I can, I can make it out. This is H100. Um, so, you know, you're getting a, a very rigid material here and you can get in a lot of shapes and sizes. And when you get into the urethanes, the cool thing about urethane, I've got a nice block of the thinner stuff here, this is called lastifoam, is that forget about shaping it with 
you know, 24 grit. You don't need that. You could shape it with, this is a 120 grit sanding wheel and get very, very smooth profiles out of it. Where when I start making corners out of this stuff, it looks like crap. This stuff here is back to that paint ready surface. It's very, very smooth. And that's because it's really very tiny little bits all mashed together and it's extremely weak. This reminds me a lot of limestone. If you've ever worked with limestone, you know you can rub two of it against each other and it'll sand itself. This does that. In other words, I'll take a piece of foam here. Look, this foam is hardly indented. I've barely damaged the surface of that. And I've just literally eaten away the surface of this. This material shapes very smoothly and very easily. So when we start doing things where we want to make some type of elegant shape and we really need to do something cool with it, imagine plunge cutting with a router in wood like this. I'm literally plunge cutting by forcing the blade straight down in. You know, if you want to make shapes like that, and I can smooth this out here, and I wanted to make, you know, I don't know, I'm just making this up as I go along, but some type of pivot how this stuff just breaks instead of actually working nicely. Boom. You make any kind of shape you want out of stuff like this and it's very, very easy to work with this material. It takes a little bit more work to do with this kind of thing. Okay, so these are all different kinds of foams. Um, for those of you who might be wondering, Natster, if you see this, yes, I use wood all the time, uh, but it gets embedded straight in the fiberglass. The reason for wood is that this is a marine grade plywood here. You can see, I think this is 14 layer in a single quarter inch piece. It's extremely dense. There are zero voids. Um, and this is what you use when you want hard points. This or aluminum. I, I use a lot of aluminum or, or steel. So if you're running a bolt through something, this is good crush resistance here. You know, I can't push this with my fingers and I'm certainly not... I marked the surface, but I didn't dent the surface with that hammer. That's still smooth, okay? Um, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't put a couple washers and a bolt through here. I mean, if you're not torquing them down real tight, it's going to be fine. But if you want to put a lot of clamping pressure, if you want that bolt to be in shear, it, this isn't going to do it. You need something to really crush against. And what you do is you just cut a piece of this out, maybe an inch or two square, and you literally embed it in the foam. So you would cut, you know, in your foam, you would cut a spot where the wood would go. I'm just hacking this out, so don't mind the fact that it's going to look ugly. And you would embed a piece of wood literally in there. You would use one of the same thickness. This is quarter inch, so I'd, put, I'd marry it with that stuff, not with this. You know, you need 3 8 plywood for this one, uh, or a 3 8 inch piece of aluminum. Stick that into your layup over the top, and then you can drill your hole out, and you have a nice chunk of metal in there where you can really torque down on that bolt, and uh, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to crush it, uh, and it's going to last forever. Um, so yeah, do use a lot of plywood. Um, I also use a lot of other types of wood in there, mostly as stiffening pieces, sometimes on an inner corner. You don't have to, it's just an option. Um, there are a lot of ways to skin the cat and some of them just happen to be smaller or lighter if you do them right. So um, lots of different kinds of foam. I uh, hope this was informative or at least interesting. Um, if you are looking to get into fiberglassing, you've never done any before, I would start with this stuff. 3 8 inch material, you can make almost anything out of it. You can glue it, you can take two pieces, glue them against each other like this, and do fiberglass layups around them and make all kinds of crazy shapes that are waterproof, never rust, last forever, and have a lot of strength to them. And they go real quick. I mean, oh, I got an outside hook. I mean, it takes five seconds to really make just about anything with this kind of thing. Um, so I personally plan to use, I have not started my schooling, um, we're in the process of 
selling our place here, so we're getting ready to buy the bus. Uh, but when we do get to that point, I plan to use a lot of this. Um, it's not a complete replacement for a steel or aluminum. Every material has its place. But I am a fan of it, and I, I do think there are a number of places where I could use it and where I plan to use it. And, um, you know, you, you have to make your decisions about what works best for you, but uh, I think I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful, and uh, I'll try to keep the series going. Um, I have my epoxy in my other workshop, and um, I'm kind of downsizing here right now, so when I get over to the other thing, hopefully I'll be able to show you some actual layup work doing this kind of thing here and making some useful shapes. And I'll certainly video anything I do when I'm building my own.